So every chromatographer always desire a peak with the minimum width at the peak base. So what is the reason that everyone wanted to have a peak with the minimum peak width at the base? Because this helps in accurate peak integration and hence in accurate quantitation. This also helps us in having a lower detection limit and lower quantitation limit. But uh, do we end up getting a, a peak width with only a minimum value? Absolutely no. Because as the retention time gets increased, our peak width at the base also gets increased. As our plate count gets dropped, our peak width at the base also gets increased. So how one can sort this challenge? Hi. My name is Bhaskar Napte. I am founder of the Pharma Growth Hub. And as a part of this discussion, we will discuss one important concept which is used in the gradient evolution run can help us to compress the peak. Yes, we are going to talk about something called as a peak compression concept. So the peak compression concept is uh, possible in case if you are using a gradient evolution. So what happens? In gradient evolution, generally the mobile phase strength increases with the time. Just look at this particular example. I have a gradient program where percent A is a weaker diluent like aqueous and percent B is a stronger diluent like organic solvent like methanol or acetonitrile. So if you can look at uh, this gradient program, you will find that from 0 to 10 minutes it's isocratic and after 10 minutes until 14 it is a gradient run. So at uh, 10 minutes it is a 90% A and at 14 minutes it is a 10% A. So the proportionate of weaker diluent which is aqueous is getting reduced. However, the, the percentage of stronger diluent which is acetonitrile or methanol is getting increased from 10% to 90%. So in gradient evolution generally, the strength of the mobile phase gets increased. As the proportionate of organic solvent increases, we can now see that at 14 minutes, our mobile phase is much stronger as compared to the mobile phase maybe at 0 minute or at 10 minute. The band moves fast in the strong mobile phase. Means once you, you inject our sample onto the column, it forms a band and the band of the sample moves faster with the stronger mobile phase as compared to the weaker mobile phase. You must have seen uh, the retention time drop in a stronger mobile phase which containing higher amount of organic solvent because of the faster movement of the band in a stronger mobile phase. Thus the rear side of the sample band or the back side of the sample band moves in the mobile phase being stronger than the mobile phase in the front of the band and as a result our the band becomes narrow or the peak compression take place. Let me explain with the help of a diagram. Let us assume this uh, is a column you know you can see a column onto the screen and uh, there is a sample band represented by blue color. You can see the high concentrated analyte at the center and as the distance increases, maybe towards the rear side or towards the front side, the concentration of analytes gets decreased. Let us assume this is a gradient program you can see on the left side of your screen. And our gradient program starts exactly from 10 minutes until 14 minutes. So what is the change in the rate of uh, solvent A and solvent B? It is 20% per minute, right? You can calculate and understand, okay? So at any minute, at any given minute, you will have a 20% change in A and 20% change in diluent B in the mobile phase. Let us assume that you want to take a snapshot or a picture inside a column at exactly 12 minutes. Let us assume that you are going to take a picture of a 12 minute so what is going to be the proportionate of A and B at 12 minutes, if you calculate, you will find that the 50% of A and 50% of B will be available in the mobile phase at 12 minutes. Now if the 13 minutes comes and if you again take a picture, 
Now what is going to be the proportionate of A and B inside the column? By the rate of change of 20% per minute, you will easily calculate that A will be 30% and B will be 70%. Now what has happened? Does the proportionate of B increased or decreased with the increase in time? With increase in time, you can easily see that the proportionate of B means a stronger content of a mobile face got increased. At a 12 minute, it was 50%, but at 13 minute, it is now 70%. So just read this sentence again. The rear backside of the sample band moves in the mobile face being a stronger. So does the mobile face at the rear side is stronger than the mobile face at the front side? The mobile face which is containing more proportionate of a organic is a stronger mobile face. And hence one can easily understand that the mobile face in the rear side is stronger as compared to the mobile face in the front side of the band. Now what happens now? We also learned that you know, the band moves fast in the strong mobile phase. If you, the, if you read the third point from the above, the band moves fast in the strong mobile phase. That means as this rear band is experiencing a stronger mobile phase, can we expect now this band is going to start moving faster as compared to the front end band? And what happens if the band comes closer to each other, the peak is going to become sharp. Or we can say now, this band has got compressed. This band has got compressed as this rear band has got moved faster because of the strong, stronger mobile phase. And as this is going to has got compressed now, you can experience a much sharper peak. And this is called as a peak compression. The peak compression is achieved based on the difference in the solute migration velocities in two different mobile phases, weak versus strong. You can see a snapshot over here. A weaker mobile phase in the front of the peak and a stronger mobile phase in the rear side of the peak. And our solute has a different velocities inside the different mobile phases. I mean weak mobile phase and the stronger mobile phase. In weak mobile phase, you will have a uh, slower migration and in a stronger mobile phase, you will have a higher migration or the higher speed of the band. What is the peak compression? And uh, I think we learned about the peak compression and how it can take place. So how one can bring this phenomena in the place? By changing the solvent composition, which is the absolute way of gradient elution, you can also make it possible with the temperature gradient and the flow rate gradient also. Let us now take one example. And as a part of this example, you can see on the screen, there are two chromatograms shown. Chromatogram A is upper chromatogram and chromatogram B is a lower chromatogram. So in the present example, the peak compression began when the sample band migrated to the exit of the column to avoid further on-column diffusion after peak compression. See, we also talked a little bit about the how this band gets uh, broadened. The band gets broadened because of the on-column diffusion. And if you suppose, for example, you know, make the uh, band compressed with the gradient elution, and is as the peak has not eluted from the column, you can imagine that so-called compressed peak can start broadening because of the on-column diffusion. And to avoid that, you can always target to compress the peak just at the exit of the column. Just think about this retention time, okay? And then your uh, chromatographic run gets in. So just before its elution, you bring this uh, gradient elution on the place. Let us try to understand this example now. So the chromatogram A is non-compressed uh, chromatogram where there is no gradient elution uh, have been uh, used. And in the chromatogram B, there is a gradient elution used. I will talk about the gradient program programs very soon. 
So this is the illusion condition for chromatogram A. 97% water and only 3% acid nitrile. It's isocratic run. I have represented this uh, isocratic run with the blue colored line, isn't it? And what is the illusion condition for chromatogram B? So the first was isocratic illusion with the same proportionate of water and ACN, 97% water and 3% acid nitrile. You can see this uh, blue colored line in the chromatogram B, which is a isocratic run, maybe I think until 34 or 35 minutes. Now, after the 34 or 35 minute, the step gradient has been used. An abrupt gradient has been used. And what is the change now? This is the change. So, from initial 97 to 3%, the program has switched to 20% ACN and only 80% water. So, our proportionate of ACN has got increased from 3% to 20%. And because of this increment, this is the step gradient you can see over here. And because of this increment, you can also expect a little drop in the retention time of the analyte. So with only isocratic run until the end of the chromatogram, you have around 37.36 minutes as a retention time. But as now we are increasing the proportionate of strong diluent, which is ACN after 34 or 35 minutes, our retention time has got slightly decreased. But what is the observation? Do you see the jump in the peak height? Do you see the decrease in the peak width at the base? And that is what called as a peak compression. So by using the gradient illusion, you know, you can able to increase the peak response, peak height, and will be able to minimize the peak width at the base. So where to apply this particular concept? Where an isocratic run is not possible, maybe due to a sample having a complex uh, matrix. You have a lot many interference out of your sample matrix, maybe out of placebo in case of drug product. And you have to run certain amount of gradient, sorry, certain amount of isocratic run. And then after you can expect the illusion without any interference. But what happens as the runtime gets increased? What happens as the retention time gets increased? We always know that the peak width at the base gets increased and because of that our peak height gets dropped. Our signal to noise ratio can also get dropped. Now to increase this uh, peak height and minimize this peak width at the base, you can just think of applying this uh, step gradient once just before the illusion of the peak, the way we discuss in the example. So first, you separate out uh, the sample matrix with an isocratic or weak linear, linear gradient run and then apply the step gradient just before the illusion of your analyte. A few specific examples where you can apply. If you have an impurity with low response, if you are going to develop a method for cleaning or residue for analysis of mutagenic impurities because these impurities comes with a very low limit and hence there is concentration is going to be very low analyte with a low concentration in the sample or highly diluted sample solutions can be considered for such kind of peak compression concept please let me know in the comment box below if you have used this peak compression concept earlier how is your experience or in case if you are not yet used this concept and in case if you are going to explore this concept, let me also know in the chat box. Or in case if you have a different view on this topic, please let me know in the chat box below. Thank you so much.